Hello everyone. Today we are going to be playing a little bit of Planet Zoo's franchise mode. I've got a franchise in mind. I've been wanting to come back to this game for a long time. So I thought doing the franchise mode would be the perfect way to get back into it and share my adventures in Planet Zoo with you. So Roche Zoology has been set up. Our base is going to be in the UK and we are going to make a zoo in my hometown of Newcastle or Gateshead if you want to be really particular about it because that's where this first zoo is going to be built. Um, I always wanted a zoo, a zoo, a zoo, a zoo <laughs> near to where I lived when I was growing up and we were never lucky enough to have one although there are some lovely wildlife parks and stuff in the UK quite close to where I live but nothing kind of on my doorstep and who doesn't want a zoo on their doorstep so for that reason I'm going to create Saltwell Safari Park, which is right at the bottom of my street. It's a lovely park. If you are kind of local to my area, please go. If you've never been, it's worth it. There's a big lake in the centre. It's got animals already there. Like it's got some peafowl and some turkeys, rabbits and stuff. Kind of like small animals, parrots and things. It used to have a monkey at one point, I think. There was also a plane. It's, it sounds like a weird park that some child had when he was having a fever dream, but it, it, it exists, I promise you. The plane is no longer there. Though. There are pedalos shaped like swans and dragons. It's really fun. It's a nice park. <laughs> anyway, so I've sped things up to get the initial, initial start off. Um, currently, I'm just putting in my staff buildings. Otherwise, I'll forget and spend all my money on animals and have no staff to bring them into the park. So currently, it's just bare bones. I'm going to cover them up once I've got a bit of income, but for now, we'll just leave it as is. We're putting an information kiosk in here, and I'm already clearly having problems with the pathing, which has always been my downfall. And we'll get it eventually. There we go. No, still not. And that's it. Perfect. So this is going to have a vending machine on either side, just to fill that early food requirement without needing to buy a new vendor and pay another staff member. Stick a couple of bins around it pop the power in because I forgot and then we'll start expanding the path outwards for our first exhibit. So the idea from the off is to create a nice little um, reptile house or an insect house, something that kind of has four exhibits in close proximity to draw in customers. We're also going to get breeding pairs in these exhibits because we're going to sell the offspring to make some early cash and fund our larger projects. So here I'm just putting in a grid formation to be able to fit in four exhibition booths and we'll be able to fit in, I think, another two or four once this is finally built if we want to expand it. But I'll quite like it open plan and with a bit of space for people to move around. It also helps with the flow of people traffic, which often gets quite crowded when you build small areas like this. So I want to make it have a large internal area for people to view exhibits and then a path around the outside so that people can look in windows. And hopefully it'll draw in some nice early cash for us in terms of visitor funds and breeding partners. We're just filling it in. It's really bare bones at the moment because I haven't actually researched any new um, decoration. So it's all breeze block at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, but once we get some new stuff researched, we'll be able to drop these materials and use something a bit different. I also don't plan on keeping this building in this area. It will probably be relocated at some point because having it slap dash right in the middle of your park isn't great. It's just something to bring in some early income. And hopefully when I relocate it, the pathing will be perfect and not mess up. Fingers crossed. <laughs> One of the things that I've always disliked about myself when I'm playing this game is I get too impatient about stuff and everything kind of looks messy. And then I watch other YouTube videos of people creating these elaborate buildings that look incredible. And I'm like, why can't I do that? Like, because I'm an impatient fart. Anyway, um, I'm trying to be a bit more patient with things and really take my time and make something that looks nice. Unfortunately, because we don't have the initial research materials, it kind of all looks very basic. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you are too when you finally see the finished product just putting in these last slabs here that'll do 
and then we can start doing a little bit of decoration on the inside we're going to put some lights in first uh it's nice that it's gotten dark i did realize a little too late that i'd been letting the simulation run for a while and we're almost at the end of our first year already with no animals and no income so not a great start we're going to stick some ropes up just to kind of put a little bit of tentative decoration in and make the place look a little bit nicer and i do have plans for that big space in between the two exhibits that's going to be uh, like a large planter with a load of different uh, different plants and greenery in it so we're going to call this creepy crawlies because all we're going to do in here is have insects so your scorpions your arachnids we'll just see what we can get that's a decent breeding pair that gives us a good chance of uh, making some money by selling offspring i'm gonna put the big spider up here oh that looks nice Right, so we'll skip forward a little bit, and I'll just show you the animals that we've gone with. I'm just selecting the giant burrowing cockroach, I think, as my last one. If we see if we've got... No. The land snail I was hoping for, because they breed really quickly. Certainly in my experience, they've, they breed, like, so quick. We're going to go with a titan beetle. Apparently, these guys are really difficult to breed in captivity, which put me off initially, but I think we're just going to go for it and see what happens. Um, we might as well just see what we can get with the breeding pairs that we've got. So, we've got the Goliath bird here. Just going to send them in. Next up, the giant burrowing cockroach. Then we've got the giant desert hairy scorpion, I think it is. <laughs> and finally our titan beetle and that's our four exhibits so we can just finish setting this up now i oh i noticed there's a space there yes we need to get rid of these because i don't want them to be open on all sides because we'll just start getting crowds gathering where i don't want them to so i'm going to wall off this area in the same way that it's walled off on the opposite side and then we can close up those windows and put 3d facades in just taking these out and there we go and there we go right so next up we just want to make sure that all of the climates are right in the vivariums let's start with closing the windows just get the right one yep perfect 3d facade on that one and number four, close that one, and a 3D facade on that one. Great. Right, moving on. Next one. Close those two. 3D facades. And 3D facades. Just actually better... I'll come back around and do the climates. Goliath birdie here. Closing the windows. That's the right one. Perfect. 3D facades on them. And lastly, and I think it'll be number four. Yep, great. 3D facades on each of them, and then we'll start getting the climates right. So we just need to adjust the temperature slightly and the humidity in this one. Rid of this one just needs a temperature adjustment by a little bit yeah i think that's about in line and the humidity will just boost a little bit so that it's in a nice comfort zone these won't take effect until i actually unpause the game and temperature here a little bit more perfect and lastly both need to be changed here so just boost the temperature up and drop the humidity for our scorpions. Perfect. Next up, we're going to put in our education boards. Uh, these normally clip, but because I had to build the wall out slightly, they're not going to. So we're going to put them in the... Can I put that one in? No, I think that's going to be far too big. So we put these in each corner. Nice and tucked away. Got a little uplight on them as well. I quite like that. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. 
Shows how much I've played the game. <laughs> that I've not noticed that they're lit up from the bottom. And we put our donation boxes in. These should cover both of them. Just hook all of these up to the correct animals. And away we go. Excellent. Now we're going to put in some planters. So here what I like to do is I take the desert rocks. There we go. Is that one going to fit? No, I don't. Ah, that doesn't look great either. It took me a little while to work on this. Um, and then eventually I just kind of gave up on this rock and used one of the other ones. Uh, it just does not fit. So it was a bad idea to pick that one. I then went for the um, 4x4 facades, I think they are. The cladding one. And that fit perfectly. So it does look a bit like raised earth. And we're just going to pop in some desert-based plants. Just to make it look nice and pretty for the guests. I played around a little bit, but most of the stuff was really too big for what I was after. Uh, so I had to go with a load of smaller plants. But it does look quite nice now that they're in. I then thought it might be a good idea to get another rock in. And we put it on one side. Uh, I didn't really want to go for ivy because it didn't suit the theme. Although we do have creeping ivy, or plant to use creeping ivy on the outside. I then duplicated all of the stuff here, apart from the wall crawling. Moved it, rotated it a little bit so it didn't look completely the same. Moved it into position and then added another couple of plants. Just to fill it out a little bit more. Then we moved to the outside, started to make that look a little bit more pretty. We're going to do this by putting a little bit of creeping ivy on. I really like using the ivy, it just puts a nice accent on buildings. In particular, I like the singular like pillars of hanging ivy. So we're going to put them coming down from the roof and make a little archway going over the entrance. And then what we did was we tried to get this going behind the lettering, but it wasn't playing ball. The one time I did think I got it, it didn't look great. And I was worried that it would seep through into the actual compound itself. So that didn't work. Instead, I just moved it down so that it kind of blanketed over the, um, the window. But it doesn't look great. That'll be something else I'll come back to and change in the future. The next thing to do was to try and eliminate people walking up to the window by making another little plant there that we'll hopefully expand in a future episode or off camera just to put finishing touches on i hired some staff because i would forget to do something and then we'll just skip forward so we're three months in now from august when i accidentally left it running i did notice a couple of things uh, we had paths uh, where those new planters outside are and they were causing people to walk through walls which wasn't great, so I had to delete a few paths. Unfortunately, when I did this, I ended up with some curved paths and some squared paths that I couldn't rectify because the age-old obstructed tooltip kept popping up, which made things a little bit messy, which is a bit of a shame, and hopefully I'll be able to fix it at another point. I then had to put some bins in because we were getting a little bit of a litter problem, but on the whole, it's been a decent start. We've been pulling in about $500, $600 across both of our donation pots, and our information kiosks up and running and the vending machines are being used so it's been a decent start we've got money coming in um, certainly enough to possibly build our first animal habitat certainly to get a few more exhibits in we may build another facility i'll probably do that off camera and then show you how it looks and i'll probably make this one look a bit nicer as well we also have had some babies born and funny enough it's the titan beetles who were apparently the most difficult ones to breed in captivity They've had three offspring. We're going to sell a couple of those to give us a little bit of starting income. I may even move this facility to somewhere else and give it a little bit more of a curved path so that it doesn't look so grid-like and uniform. I want this to be a nice like flowing park with lovely curved paths that people are going to enjoy visiting, not something that looks a bit like a built-up city. Next episode, we're going to do some research and development, tidy up the staff area and probably do our first animal habitat. I hope you stick around. It's been fun. Hit like, subscribe. See you next time, guys. Thank you.